Hey everybody, so if you watched our Lemons for Leukemia Challenge, uh, you know that Vicky is in America right now, so I wanted to do some videos answering some questions that you guys have been asking and just give you an idea of my perspective being here in Taiwan and what uh, you could expect as a Westerner coming here. So the question, as you saw in the title, is do I need to learn Chinese before I come to Taiwan? So also a quick disclaimer before we begin. Uh, please keep in mind that my answers are not the end-all be-all to these questions. I could make full videos on each one of these questions and answers, and we might get to that, uh, but I really just wanted to scratch the surface and give you guys an idea of what to expect. So to answer the main question, do I need to learn Chinese before I come to Taiwan? Uh, I would say yes and no. That's not an easy question to answer. It, it really depends on how deep you want to get into the culture and what you want to do here in Taiwan. Uh, you, you can definitely get around this place without Chinese. It's certainly doable. Um, you're going to use a lot of body language, which is pretty limiting. Uh, but you're going to be able to order and you're going to be able to really get what you want, but as far as having a conversation or, you know, really getting to know somebody or like getting friends who don't really speak English, that's going to be challenging. Also something that I discover here is that people are pretty shy about using their English. It's kind of an anxious moment for them when you approach somebody in a store and they realize, oh my god, I, ha I have to use my English now. Uh, it's, it's not everybody. and. Certainly in Taipei, there's less of this. There's, there's a lot of English in Taipei, but you get outside of Taipei, things start to change. So we've lived in Taichung, and Vicky, as you know if you've watched her videos, is from Kaohsiung, where we are now. And I would say the spread of English is less in Taichung and here in Kaohsiung. It's, it's definitely around. You can find it on some street signs, uh, the bigger chains, and surprisingly, some smaller restaurants will have English menus, but most of the signs and most of the people use Chinese. So, yes and no. You can, you can definitely do Taiwan without Chinese, but if you plan on living here, it's going to be more difficult for you, um, depending on what your goals are here, like I said. So to give you guys a quick example of this, um, before Vicky left to go to America this time, she, she showed me a uh, dumpling shop close to where we live, and I thought she showed me on the menu what to order. I, I can read some Chinese. My Chinese is still very limited. Um, but I thought I knew enough. I thought I could like read enough to, to ask the right questions and order the right stuff. There's no English menu at this place. Um, so I went there after I dropped her off at the airport and I ordered 12 of just regular dumplings, I thought. Uh, side note, and this will probably give away what I'm trying to get at here. I can't eat green onions because they give me pretty bad heartburn, uh, like the spring onions. So anyway, I, I get my order, I get home, I open it up, and these things are pretty green <laughs> from how many green onions they had packed into the dumplings. So even though I thought I knew what I was ordering, I thought that Vicky had showed me what to order, I still ordered the wrong thing, and even with the Chinese that I know how to read, I wasn't able to see the, the green onion on the menu, and that's my fault totally my fault. Lesson learned. I need to not only say buyaotong, but I need to learn what it looks like on a menu, and now I do. So the point there is if you go to a restaurant only reading or speaking a little Chinese, uh, you, you may not always get what you're trying to order. So it does behoove you to learn some Chinese and how to, how to read some Chinese, how to speak some Chinese. You don't absolutely need it, but you're going to encounter a lot of menus here that are only Chinese and you're going to order some stuff that you maybe didn't want. Okay, awesome. So, like me, you've decided you're going to study Chinese before you come. Well, what you're soon going to find out is that a lot of the Chinese study materials that are on the market, at least in America, are targeted at mainland Mandarin. Uh, so, mainland China Chinese. Uh, so, why is that a problem? Well. For example, uh, a fan dian is a restaurant in China. You come here and you say fan dian, that's a hotel. So what's the problem there? Well, just like other places in the world, like England and America, England uses different words for things than, than we do. Yes, people are going to understand you eventually with some stuff, uh, but other things they're not going to understand you. 
Another important note there is that Taiwan uses traditional Chinese, whereas mainland China uses simplified Chinese. And again, a lot of the study materials you're going to find online are going to be targeted at simplified Chinese. Is it easier to read and write? Yes. Is learning simplified Chinese going to help you read signs here in Taiwan? Uh, yes and no. I mean, some stuff is the same, but a lot of it's very different. And it's harder to come from simplified Chinese to traditional Chinese than it is to learn traditional and then try to read simplified. So that can be quite a challenge. Also, if, like me, you learn pinyin before you come, which is super helpful, and we'll get to that in a second, uh, if you come to Kaohsiung, they use a different pinyin system down here than they do up north. So there are definitely a few challenges you're going to need to conquer taking on Chinese before you come to Taiwan. And I'm gonna to get to some study materials that you can use, that I've been using uh, here in a second. So can you come here and speak mainland China Mandarin? Sure, there may be some confusion and some stuff may get lost in translation. Uh, and the reason I chose not to do that is because, you know, all of my in-laws uh, are from Taiwan and they speak Taiwanese Mandarin, which isn't vastly different. Uh, it's just based on traditional characters and they have a different vernacular, obviously. And they throw in Taiwanese, which is a whole nother monster altogether. So is Chinese difficult to learn? Are the rumors true? Uh, I would say yes. Once you get into it, it gets easier and easier and then harder and harder. Uh, but the initial start is, is very complicated. Uh, to, to wrap your head around when, when compared to other languages like Korean, which I've also studied, which is actually pretty easy to get into and then it gets harder as, as you start progressing, uh, especially with the grammar. I, I got really lost with uh, Korean grammar because there's like five to 10 ways to say anything. So what makes Chinese so hard? Well, first of all, the tones. You've always heard about the tones and that's the difference between ma, 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 ma. Sorry about my bad tones, my Chinese isn't awesome, but all of those words have different meanings. So that can be hard to wrap your head around. But the good news is the more you study that and the more you hear it and being here and talking to people and being around it, you do start to wrap your head around it and it does start to make sense. But the second thing that makes Chinese difficult is the straight memorization of the characters. What do I mean by this? Well, I could be walking down the street in Korea see a sign, open my phone, and type in the hangul for that sign and directly translate it that way. Uh, in Taiwan here and in China, I could be walking down the street like I often do, see a sign, look at the characters, and I have no way of knowing what that character is unless Vicky's with me or I know the character. So it's, it's a lot of you either know it or you don't. You have it memorized or you don't. Yes, there are radicals you can use and learn to figure out how the character is built, but I'm here to tell you that doesn't help. If you don't know the character, you don't know the character, and it's gonna be very difficult for you to put that character into your phone. You can use the Google Translate thing that looks at the characters and tries to tell you what it says, but I found that really doesn't help that much either. So where do you begin? And before I give you suggestions, let me tell you, I'm not being paid to say any of this. These are just places and things that I have found uh, to help me along my traditional Chinese journey. Um, anyway, the, the first place I would begin is Learn Pinyin. I've put a link in the description below for you to check out a, a YouTube channel uh, and series where you can do that. Um, also check out FluentU.com. That place is awesome. It's, it's actually where I've turned my focus of study uh, because they give you videos of real context of where things are said and then it breaks down the character, it breaks down the opinion, it breaks down how to use what you're learning. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, the only drawback is it's $15 or $30 depending on what package you get. But there is a 15 day free trial there. Um, also if you can find it and get your hands on it, Pimslers, uh, if you've heard of that, it's, it's a great audio course on, on learning really any language. Uh, the only drawback there is that focuses on uh, mainland China Mandarin. So you're gonna learn that, that Fan Dian thing from that course. Uh, and then you come here and people are gonna ask, why, why are you wanting to go eat at hotels all the time? Also check out the book, A Course in Contemporary Chinese. That book is awesome. 
uh, I've, I've learned a lot from it. And you'll really start being able to read Chinese if you pick up that book. Again, link in the description to where you could buy that book on Amazon. I think right now it's going for like $66, but it'll be well invested if uh, your goal is to learn Chinese. A final resource you can check out is Duolingo.com. It's free and I'm sure you guys have heard of it. Uh, you can go there to learn almost any language for free. Uh, and they actually have a Chinese course in beta right now. And they're, it's a little rough still, but it's, it's mostly complete. Uh, I've been going through it. I'm probably a quarter of the way through or maybe a little bit more. Um, the only problem with it is, again, it's focused on mainland China Mandarin, uh, which you know, you're going to be learning simplified Chinese and uh, a mainland China vernacular, which doesn't help me a lot here. But the thing that I like about it is that it has showed me some grammar points that uh, I otherwise didn't know or hadn't messed with yet. So that's at least another resource you could check out. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're taking on the challenge of learning Chinese, I wish you luck. Uh, but again, to answer the overall question, you don't need Chinese to come to Taiwan, but it'll help your life a lot if you take the time to at least learn a little bit uh, before you come here and while you're here. So also, as always, if you guys would like to connect with us in other places, uh, we've got links in the description to our Instagram, our Twitter, our Facebook. We'd love to see you on there, leave in comments. Uh, also, if you like what you see, maybe consider supporting us on Patreon. We've got a link in the description to our page there, uh, or you could just go to asiabrew.com. Uh, so yeah, have an awesome day, guys, and we'll catch you in the next one. Yes. I see you. I see you, construction man. Uh, and... Have we got a truck? Have we got... See... If you want to break all the laws in Taiwan, driving, buy yourself a blue truck. I'm, I'm pretty sure the only qualifications to drive these things are, do you have an affinity to break the law? And are you over the age of 50? That's all you need. And then you can just drive it through a park and not follow any traffic laws whatsoever. <laughs>